Hey, this is Amanda Hammond, and this is the Millennial Rockstar Podcast. So today's rock star is Delaney Olson, and Delaney is this amazing creative marketing and brand strategy, like just go to juggernaut. And she is very young, only about three years out of college, and she has had a lot of responsibility on her shoulders. And the reason she was given so much responsibility, in my opinion, was that she was very aware from the get-go, right out of college, that there were all these negative stereotypes around the work ethic of millennials. And she wanted nothing more than to prove that she was nothing like that stereotype. And I think that you'll find that her supervisors and all the people within the company that she was with really understood that she was nothing like those millennial stereotypes. So tune in and find out what Delaney has to share. Hey, this is Amanda Hammett, and this is the Millennial Rockstars podcast. All right, today we have a super duper special uh, rock star on the show. Her name is Delaney Olson. Delaney, welcome to the show. Hi there. Thank you, Amanda. So I I have to be very honest with you. Um, There are some people in this, in the business world that I absolutely love and adore. (laughs) And (laughs) one of them is from One Bridge Technologies. Uh, His name is Daryl Johnson. And (laughs) Daryl actually was one of two people that recommended you to be on the show. So Delaney, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I graduated from Butler University in Indianapolis about three years ago now, and my first job out of college was at OneBridge uh, with Daryl, and I was the marketing coordinator to start off with, and then I got promoted to the marketing specialist. And after two years of living, working in Indianapolis, I decided it was time to go home. My whole family lived up in Chicago, so I ended up finding a marketing specialist role with an events company called Total Event Resources in um, Chicago. And so I just moved up here about three months ago and started this new role. Very, very cool. So it's a really exciting time of transition in your career, which is awesome. But I happen to know that you learned a lot in your old role. Yes. One bridge was very important to me. The people there were out of this world. I remember being so incredibly nervous and thinking that I was just going to fall flat on my face from day one. And it was the complete opposite of that. And I grew into this marketing professional that I just never thought I would even become, you know, five years from now, let alone a year and a half, two years after first starting there. Absolutely. Well, that is one thing that Eric told me when he and I spoke uh, about you. He actually said that he had taken over that role. Um, mm-hmm. And he said, you know, it's, it's always worrisome when, when you're taking on a new role, knowing that you're inheriting some employees. <laughs> but he was like, I was, I was worried going into it. But after spending like a week with her, it was like, I knew that this was meant to be. Yes, I was just as worried as he was. I um, I was really close with my super- first supervisor, and that was the first person that really didn't treat me like a millennial, and I respected that. So I was a little nervous with the change in um, positions. And when Eric came in, it was the same exact thing. He didn't look as at me as you know a different generation than him, or that I wasn't as experienced as him yet. He wanted to know what I was good at, and then he put those abilities to work. That's great. That's what a good leader does. Yes. That is exactly what a good leader does. Well, fantastic. All right. So I know that you are three years into your career, um, but I would assume that you have hit some bumps along the road already. Yes. Could you, could you give us a little background or a little bit of information about those little bumps for you? Yes, of course. So the biggest one was probably I was thrown into a very, very large project. One Bridge was rebranding. They were originally Smart IT, and they were turn, transitioning over to One Bridge. And it was pretty exciting because I loved brand marketing. I was super passionate about it. And they wanted the marketing department to take on that responsibility to come up with this rebrand and put it you know, into action, which was great. But during the rebrand, I had a change in um, supervisors. And so I just remember, I was like, okay, they're going to take everything that I've started and it's just going to get flipped over and turned around because who's going to trust the girl who's been out of school for a year and a half to finish off an entire company's rebrand? 
and they, they hadn't found someone yet to fill my supervisor's position. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely nervous about it. And so I remember I went into my first meeting um, and it was with Kim, the um, director of employee engagement. It was the exact opposite of that. She took everything. She said, okay, let's lay it out. What have you been doing so far? What do you want to do moving forward? And let's make sure that all of your ideas and plans get executed like you wanted them to from day one. And I respected that so much because she wasn't looking at me as, um, you know, my work as my old supervisor's work. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know, you know, she knew I had a part in it and that was that. And so I got to move forward with it. But the whole process was a bump in the road because it was scary being that young and being given that role. And then Eric eventually did jump in and, you know, that was a breath of fresh air because I had someone else to help me launch this new brand. Um, so he was there for the last three months of it and all in all the project lasted a year. So it was a lot of work. Um, we had, you know, we had one company we were working on the website with and I thought I had nailed down and it was going smoothly. And then a month before we were supposed to launch the new brand and the website, they said, we can't get it done until three months from now. And so we just had to roll with it. And it was surprising how many people, you know, no matter what generation they were, or, you know, they knew I didn't have that much experience, they still trusted me, um, because they knew I worked hard. And so I really appreciated that. Now, I have a question here. Um, I, I mean, I, I love your CEO over there. I think she is phenomenal. Yes. Um, I will, of course, we've already talked about, I love Daryl. So yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, but you are young. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that is an incredible, I mean, the CEO of there, she has built that up to like what, 50 million. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's not a small enterprise mm -hmm. over there and they have some incredible clients and huge, huge enterprise clients. And that's for them to make this huge transition mm -hmm. in branding, <laughs> naming, business model. I mean, that's a lot to put on your shoulders at 23, 24. Yes. 23, 24. Uh, yeah. I'm just curious, like, how, how did you get it to the point where they trusted yeah. you to do that? Well, that's funny because Daryl always talks. He's like, you were a flip of a switch. The, for, I don't know why, but I always had this, um, right when I graduated college, I felt like the millennial stereotype was huge at that time. And that was the last thing I wanted. I never wanted to be seen as this lazy worker or I only wanted to be there for perks or anything like that. And so I was paranoid about that. So I remember for probably like the first six months of working there, I wasn't really myself because I was like, I, I gotta, I gotta be this person, you know? And it wasn't because of anyone I was working with and that they made me feel like I couldn't be. It was just that I, I felt like I needed to be someone because of that millennial stereotype. And then I don't know what, what actually changed, but and it was even like how I was dressing and everything. I wasn't really showing my personality and my clothes. And I was wearing, you know, all black like every day. And I'm like, it's not me, you know? And so something changed and I just kind of started to speak up a little bit more and show my personality and the work that I was doing. And even just in my demeanor every day, I started to, we had to dress a uh, business professional every day. And I, I kept that up, but I was still being myself and how I was dressing. And people started to notice. I remember my supervisor at the time said, she's like, I follow you on social media and I feel like you're acting more like yourself now to me. And I was, and I don't know what it was, but once that happened, I think people started to realize that, yes, I am younger, but even if when, when I am being myself, I was still a hard worker. I got things done and I got them done well. And so Daryl even says, he's like, there was one day you just came into this meeting and he's like, you just blew me away. <laughs> he's like, you were talking more than you've ever talked and you had ideas and you knew that they needed to be done and you got them done. And so I think it was a good feeling that other people around me besides just people who are higher up in the company saw this in me and trusted me because they would come to me then every day, right. you know, with whatever it was. And so then I think people higher up started to see that, oh, Delaney's wearing a lot of hats and mm -hmm. she's helping out people in departments that, you know, it probably doesn't even have to do with marketing, but she jumped in to help out. And so I think that that's what really kind of put the trust in me when it came to that, because 
they were under a time constraint and they saw that I was getting stuff done on a usual basis. So why not trust that I would get it done now, even though I necessarily didn't have someone directly supervising me. Um, and Kim, I mean, played a huge role in that. She did, you know, she had so much going on. She should not, you know, the last thing she needed to worry about was a rebrand of a company, but she made time for me and made time to hear what I had to say and wanting to know why I was doing something a certain way. And I really respected that. So I think that that helped as well, having her by my side to kind of support me, even though it wasn't necessarily her forte. Right. That's amazing. And it it sounds like, and and just having been a third party spectator to, Mm -hmm. to this whole rebrand, I mean, it really, really sounds like the communication lines were very open in all directions. All directions. Sometimes it's just, you know, from the top down, but it Mm -hmm. really sounds like it was coming out from everyone. They did an amazing job with that. And they told me from day one, Mm -hmm. If, you know, you're questioning something about the brand and we were in a meeting and everyone was one way, but you feel another way, come back to us and represent it then. Tell us why it needs to be that way. And so I really appreciated that because, again, they let me have a voice and they knew that it was something that I was passionate about and I was good at. And so they were letting me run with it. So that's really fantastic. And they have an open door policy there. And I know that's so cliche. You probably hear that all the time, but they truly mean it. I mean, the COO sat in the Indianapolis office and he didn't matter when it was, if, you know, he just got a really important call and he just got off of it and he needed to debrief. No, if you needed something, if there was a concern, come into his office and talk to him about it. And I think that that was really beneficial too. That's fantastic. Especially in, in a time of like these major, major transitions. Yeah. Um, that's really, that's fantastic. Yes. Um, all right. So let's, we have talked over some stumbling blocks and some lessons learned. Um, but let's, let's circle back a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Uh, you graduated from college three years ago, right? Yes. Okay. So think back to Delaney three Sorry. years ago, pre-work Delaney. Um, yes. Did you have this idea in your mind about what corporate America or the working world was going to be like? And what and how does that interface with the realities yes. of working the working world? So I had this image that it was cubicles on cubicles and I was going to sit there all day and you weren't going to see the sunlight and you got your work done and you just kind of so let cool. off. Not that you weren't friends with people, but like, wh- why would you like go out after work with people if like you work with them all day? I had that image in my head and I don't know, have you been to the One Bridge office before? I, no, I have not. So th- this like will change your mindset on everything. I walked into this office and it's so modern. Everything, you know, th- it's, it's very open and they have collaborative workspaces and they have a huge break room with like a ping pong table. And, you, you know, I walked in there and I was like, where am I interviewing? Like this, I'm like, <laughs> what is this? And I was so blown away by that. But it was funny because my parents... I I get out of the interview and I'm telling them all about the office. And my dad goes, well, I don't care about the office. He's like, what about the position? What about the people? And I was like, oh, I'm like, that's, you're right. Like that was bad that I was so concerned about the office. But I think, you know, as millennials, we kind of have that picture in our head that that's what something's going to be like. So that really threw me off. Um, But luckily one bridge doesn't, just focus on the perks. You're, they focus on you as an employee first and the perks come second, which that is what I've come to love and have looked for in companies. And I know other people appreciate it um, at one bridge. And so that kind of, you know, it was different going into that environment. And people said, they're like, how do you get work done? Like you guys have a beer fridge and you know, it's just whatever, but it's, there it's different. They, they focus on you as an employee and educating you and making sure you are advancing in your career. And the perks were just a second nature. So I did have a very different uh, thought in my head about what it was all going to be like. And one bridge like threw all of those out the door, especially a work from home life balance, I guess, like a, you know, sometimes I was like, Oh, well I have a doctor's appointment and it's an hour across town with traffic. And then I got to come back to the office and they're like, well, why don't you just work from home? And I was like, 
is that allowed? <laughs> like, can you do that? And so that was another one that I, you know, wasn't, I kind of had in my head that you went to work eight to five and you were there unless you really did have a vacation day and you took it. Um, but they, they, you know, threw that one out the door too. If you were honestly sick or if you just needed to work from home because you needed a different environment, go for it. You know, as long as you're getting your work done and it's done on time, it doesn't matter where you're doing it. So I really did appreciate that as well. And that was definitely a change of what was going on in my head when I was interviewing at places. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. Cool. I mean, I, you know, I, I am a big fan of the leadership over there at One Bridge. I, yeah. um, you know, obviously yeah. it is well documented. My love for Daryl. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> but, no, I get that. There was another actually, um, I guess he would be a millennial as well that worked at one bridge. Um, he's still there. He's in the recruiting department and he wrote a blog post all about how it's not about the perks. Um, that's great. I love him. I love having a snack bar and all that, but I think he says something like great perks should be the symptom of a great company culture that they can't be the cause of it, that it's the perks come. That. And yes. And I, I'll have to send you the link to the blog you because will. I put it on their website. But when he wrote that and, you know, obviously it came to me first in marketing and he's like, what do you think? Cause we just um, won an award for the best places to work. And he's like, should this be, you know, should we put this on the site? Should we put it on social? And I was like, yes, because That's I think awesome. so many younger kids are now seeing all of these perks in these companies and they want to work there right away. And they're like, Oh, they have a LaCroix fridge. Oh, well that's great. But are they going to treat you right as an employee? And so I think it's good to have people who are younger already noticing those things because you, an, a company might have all those great perks, but if they're not treating you right as an employee and not, you know, wanting you to succeed in advance and become educated even more then there's no point in taking that job. I agree. And you, you would be surprised how often you see yes. that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I'm uh, like, even like I said, one bridges, you know, I'm sure people walk into there and they're like, yep, I'm in, I'm done. <laughs> I'm wanting to work here, but you know, it's good to, it was a good, you know, experience for me to take a step back and say, is this actually going to be a good company for me to work at? So I agree. I agree. Well, I mean, with, with Karen Cooper at the helm, I, I don't think you could go wrong. Oh, you can't go wrong. I know. She's, she's amazing. <laughs> I want to be Karen Cooper when I grow up. Oh, <laughs> yes. I definitely honest. agree. And I don't know if I'm, like, attracted to this, you know, women-owned companies right. that are just absolutely killing it, but the new company I'm working at is actually a woman-owned one as well. And that, really? Like, yeah, and that really stood out to me. And I was kind of look. I feel like now that, you know, I had that experience with Karen and had such a strong relationship and there was a few other women as well, higher up at one bridge that just, yeah. they beat all of the stereotypes and they really cared about me and my future. And so I, when I was moving to Chicago, I wanted that again. And so I was lucky enough to find that again, but it's definitely something that I appreciate in an organization. That's amazing. I love, 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 love. That. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's, let's look, take a look back either at OneBridge or mm -hmm. your current company. Yep. Um, is there anything specific, and we've kind of touched on this already, mm -hmm. but is there anything specific that your boss or a mentor has done that keeps you engaged and productive and really wanting to work hard? I mean, besides, let's think outside of that whole rebranding experience. Yes. I definitely say caring about my passions outside of work. And I know that sounds a little like, oh, well, you know, work is work and home is home. And maybe that's a, you know, stereotype I had as well when I was first looking for a job. But every mentor that I've had either at OneBridge or even my, I already see it now with my current supervisor at Total Events, is they, you know, they're asking me questions about, well, you know, I have a blog on the side. So, well, what's going on with that? Like, let's see it. Like, how are things going with that? And I just truly appreciate that because sometimes you do need to take a step back from work. And sometimes, you know, it's, you're so stressed out about something at work that I wasn't getting things done because I was letting it cloud my mind. Mm -hmm. But if I could focus on other things and you kind of relax and then yes. you can go back to something. So I really appreciated it because Eric did a really good job at that. Um, he was always like, you know, what's going on? Like you, he was excited about things I was doing on the side 
Um, and I really appreciated that. And even my first supervisor, when I first told her, oh, I want to start this blog, she got me a new jacket and was like, she's like, here's, I'm, I want to help your fat, you know, your passion for fashion. And I want you to roll with it. And I did not expect that at all. And I really appreciated that because then it made your everyday job that much better because people actually did care about you and, you know, cared about you outside of work as well. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think that that helps because work is a lot and sometimes you're going to get worn out. And yeah. So it's good to take a step back. And I, I really do appreciate that from people. Yeah. And then also just Daryl did a really good job of this. Even when I know I might be wrong about something or I, I don't know if the idea is totally there uh -huh. yet. He makes me run with it until it gets to that point where it's like, nope, I, I need to change yeah. gears here. Yep. If you, you know, sometimes you have to see something totally through for all of your creative ideas mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just all that to come out. And I've had people in my life in like internships before, mm -hmm. um, to talk to those that where they stop you so quickly. It's, ah, no, nah, we did that before and it didn't work and we're not going to let you go there. But you know, someone could bring a totally different experience to something like that. So Daryl did a really good job with always telling me to fully finish something through. If I have an idea, run with it and, you know, wait until it gets to the total end before I say, ah, oh, that was a flop. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so he did a really good job with that. And I 100% appreciate that. And it was funny because I would see that in him too. He would come to me with some crazy idea. And I, at first I'd be like, wait, I don't, I don't know if we got time for this. I don't know if we should keep talking about this. And then he would get going more and I'd let him keep going and it would spin out into something amazing. And I'm like, we, we should have been doing this a year ago. So I think it's good for a mentor, a supervisor, whatever, to really let you take the reins on a project or just something and let you see it through because you teach yourself a lot in that as well. Yes, <laughs> you, do. you do learn a lot about about the process, but also yes. about yourself and, mm -hmm. and your skills and all right, that that's not where I need to be yep. going, or maybe this is something I need to investigate further. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't find those things out if you're in this little box. Mm -hmm. And I've been in that, I feel like I've been in that box with yes. you know, some internships. I felt I was just so restricted and I get you're an intern and mm -hmm. you know, whatever, but I had an internship where it wasn't like that. And it was go for it, you know, and that's when I first realized that I wanted to find a company after college that still gave me that freedom. Ah, very cool. Very cool. All right. So, um, we, we did, we just discussed the, the perks that mm -hmm. you guys have and, and, you know, I, I knew about the beer fridge, Karen and I discussed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, what is it about the perks or the culture or what is it that keeps you just excited and engaged and wanting to get up every day and let's do this again. Let's fight. Uh, yeah. Let's do this again. Oh yeah. Um, I again think it's getting to see a project all the way through mm -hmm. because I've, I've even seen this now. So I'm not fully immersed yet in my new company. I'm still getting, you know, the hang of things. But um, my supervisor was helping out with an event and it was finally the day of the event and she was there all day. She got there at eight in the morning, was there until five and this, uh, the actual main part of the event wasn't starting until 10 o'clock at night, but she just had a little girl and so she had to get home. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me, she said, can you be there and can you, you know, see this through? And I saw how hard it was for her to not be there that that project was her baby yeah. and she really wanted to see it all through and I remember feeling that way about certain projects where you're like I just need to see this through and I want to see the end of it and when you get to see all of that it's the best feeling in the world and that's what gets you to go back the next day and then do it all over again for another client or another event or whatever it is and so I, and I saw how hard it was for her. And so, you know, I made sure I was taking videos and photos left and right because I wanted her to still kind of experience it. Um, but I, I think that that is one way to definitely keep you motivated because 
everyone loves that feeling of accomplishment and you don't necessarily need to hear it from everyone. Like, Oh, you, you know, you did such a great job with this. If you just see it with your own eyes, that's the best feeling. And then that gets me going again. And I want to come up with another idea and see that one through. So I definitely think just really focusing on like wanting to do things from start to finish and maybe just on your own suggest, you know, saying I can handle this by myself and then seeing it all the way through. Um, it keeps me motivated at least. <laughs> that, I think that's really, I, I think that your answer there really circles back to at the beginning when you were talking about, you know, you wanted to prove that you were this hard worker. Mm-hmm. And I think that that answer alone proves <laughs> it because, you know, you were like, I have a hard time giving up projects that I, you know, wanted to see to fruition. Yeah. And, and I think that that's a sign of someone who has poured their heart and soul into something. Yes, no, I agree. And I think that also goes back to this millennial stereotype too, because it is the not as hardworking as some of the older generations and things like that. But honestly, I, I feel like I worked great with some of the older generations and they never, you know, said to me, oh, you're a millennial. Maybe people might have made jokes here and there when I did something, right. but you know, and I really appreciated that because they never, you know, they wanted to learn things that I knew about that they didn't know about, maybe like social media. And I wanted to learn things that I didn't know either from the beginning. And so I think it's good to kind of have that mix in the workplace as well. Um, It's important. And I've seen some people of the older generation jump on social media when (laughs) we had to do like a social media branding for the company. They wanted people to, you know, try to be more engaging on LinkedIn and things like that. And I had people coming up to me, well, I already have a LinkedIn. I want a Twitter now. I I want you to help me out with this. And I want to recruit candidates through Twitter. And I loved that because it didn't make me feel like the millennial who just sits on social media all day because they actually saw some value out of it. And so I think it's good to have that mix um, in the workplace. I think it's very important because everyone's going to bring something else to the table. That is something that I talk about all the time. It's mm-hmm. just like, you know, we each bring strengths and from our generations to the table. Yes. And it's just about accepting them and learning from each other. Because, uh, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised how many companies I talk to and they're like, yeah, we don't hire millennials. And I'm like, <laughs> how's that going to work? Not think that. I think I don't yes. understand, like, li- like, literally, how is this going to work for you? Yes. And I've gotten, since I was going through this process, you know, of looking for a job, and I actually remember getting this even before I got my job at OneBridge when I was looking for a company. It was the strangest thing. In an interview, I'd sit there for 20 minutes and show in my portfolio or talk about all of my hard work and my experience, and then they would ask me the question, so as a millennial, what do you think your work ethic is like? And I'm like, I just, I just told you what my work ethic was like. You know, it doesn't, just because you put a name on it doesn't change my work ethic all of a sudden. I swear it's the same that I just talked about. So I always found that question to be so strange in an interview. And, right. you know, I just kind of defer it back and I'd say, well, you know, I just went over everything and I don't think it changes just because you put a millennial yeah. phrase in front of my name. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely find that weird that some companies focus so, you know, highly on that when I think it is important to have a mix of different generations. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I will tell you that in speaking with Eric and <laughs> Karen and Daryl, they all will attest to the fact that you have a very, very strong work well, that makes me happy. Thank yes. you. They, so they next time you me. need to look for a job, just take this tape out yeah. of this video. This podcast to me, I swear I'm a great hard worker. <laughs> a CEO and all these other people said I'm a very hard worker. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they, were, they were one good company to land after college. That is for sure. Absolutely. Um, I definitely lucked out there. <laughs> Absolutely. They're, they're fantastic. All right. So is there anything, since you kind of touched on this, but I'd like to dig into this a little bit more, but is there anything that you wish that companies knew about recruiting younger employees? Hmm, That is a good question. I, let me think about this one. Definitely the whole stereotype around the work from home 
how millennials are the ones that want to work from home and we got to start to accommodate for that in our organization, which I think is great if you are starting to like, you know, maybe like a one day a week, things like that. But I think it's funny because I don't think it just has to do with millennials. <laughs> I, cause as I'm, um, you know, as I talk to other people, they, you know, of other generations, even my dad, he's been starting to work from home at least two days a week. And he, is all about it. He's getting more done, first of all, because he's probably like me and talks a lot when he's at work. He loves to socialize. But it's also just, I don't think that there should, I don't think the working from home should be a thing that's connected to millennials because I think it's just the fact that we have so much technology nowadays. And a lot of positions, some not so much, but a lot of positions, you can work from home now and get all of the same work done just as hard as anyone else. So when you're, you know, for a company that's maybe trying to appeal to millennials, don't necessarily just throw th those certain things out there because you're like, oh, they'll grab onto that. I think that goes to anyone. If you're wanting to hire good talent for your organization, anyone feels that way um, nowadays. And with all the technology, giving them a little bit of that freedom is a positive thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so that's definitely one of them. Um, I'm trying to, I mean, just... I love the idea of ongoing education. I'm not saying it necessarily needs to be like where you, you have money set aside because um, you maybe not be at that point if you're a smaller company, but you're still wanting to appeal to millennials. But there's a lot of free resources out there. So maybe if it is, you know, a class on, I, there was a class on SEO um, that I was really interested in taking. It ended up being a free class in Fishers, Indiana. But it was at um, 5.30s, and it was going to take me an hour to get there. So I told my supervisor, hey, I'm really interested in this, and I think it'll be beneficial for us. And she's like, get your butt over there. <laughs> she's like, that's okay that you're leaving early. She's like, this is good for us. So yeah. I think ongoing education, um, I think it's the CEO maybe of Microsoft said this. Um, don't, I'm not taking credit for this because I love this quote. <laughs> but he said, I'm not a know-it-all, I'm a learn-it-all. And I love that because I'm definitely not a know-it-all. I, I have to teach myself things over and over again. I have a terrible memory. And so when I heard that, I appreciated that a lot. Um, and I think if companies, you know, really focus on um, just that ongoing education, because with technology, everything changes so quickly, especially in the marketing world that I'm in. I swear there's something new every day. Um, and just having that ability for, you know, my supervisor to say, Hey, you should go to this workshop. Um, I know it's during the day, but it's free, even if it's not in our budget. And I think that you'll, you're going to learn from it. And I know you'll provide value to the organization. Um, Great. I mean, I just started two months ago at this company and the first two weeks, the CEO sent me an email and was like, Hey, there's a social media workshop downtown. I want you to go to this. Um, I think it's going to be great. It's um, a woman-owned organization, and I know you're passionate about that. And I was like, oh. I was like, I just started here two weeks ago. So, awesome. I, yeah. So I think that ongoing education um, should be important to millennials, but also everyone. Um, and so using that kind of as a way to look for that top talent is super important. Absolutely. I mean, what I see over and over again um, in – just in the 20 interviews I've done for the rock stars so yeah. far, almost everybody that I can think of off the top of my head that I've interviewed thus far has mentioned this need for ongoing learning, this ongoing challenge yeah. of, you know, what can they learn next? And they're not content to just sit in this okay. stationary position day in, day out doing yeah. the exact same thing. They want that learning because mm -hmm. it's, it's challenging to them and it, it keeps them going and it keeps them wanting to yep. go. So and I've had friends who started out at an organization as one position and as, you know, two years passed and they kind of started to, you know, dip their feet in other things and they got interested in other things, the organizations let them, you know, completely switch to a different department. And when I hear that, I love that because again, work is kind of lower, life is short and work is lower on that totem pole. And if you know that you're not super happy with something, but you love the organization, if they let you kind of flop that quickly to something else and, you know, jump into it, I totally respect that. I think that is like amazing across the board. Um, and yes, it is harder with smaller companies again, but, you know, probably a little bit easier with the bigger organizations. But I think that's a really cool uh, 
trait to have as an organization. So no, it is. And you know what, you, you hit the nail on the head with when you said two years, because that seems to be the magic number, right? In that time frame. Yes. You know, we start getting a little antsy and what, what can I do to add to my skill set? Yes. And yes, absolutely. Yeah, it is. I do say give a position or a, just anything time because yeah. like you said, the two years, because I feel like when I've jumped from something, one thing to the other and I didn't give it enough time, then I'm mad at myself because I'm like, well, what if that was, you know, something I would have been passionate about? And that's why internships were always hard for me because I'm like, this wasn't enough time. Like, how, how do I know that this isn't, I had an internship at a radio station and I was doing like live on air type stuff and I loved it. But at the same time I was like, ah, I don't know if this is me. But then after three months I was gone and I was like, I don't really have that opportunity again. So internships were a struggle for me because I was kind of mad that it was, it kind of kept me in that short time period. And I didn't know if I took fully felt one way or another about it. So Oh, that's hilarious. I, I've actually never heard anyone say that about an internship. I mean, I know. I've I'm talked so- to thousands of people about internships. Well, this just shows you how weird I am about that because I had an internship and it wasn't like fully what I thought I was going to be into. Mm-hmm. But after I was done, they were like, hey, you were really good at this. We need to pull on a freelancer because we're still just super swamped right now with clients. And I was in college. So I'm like, oh, this is a good opportunity. And I'll know if I really don't like this. And my mom's like, are you sure you want to keep going? And I was like, well, I I need to figure it out. And sure enough, after about four more months of that, I knew I didn't want to keep doing that. Absolutely. X that one off. Yes. (laughs) So, I mean, I think it's a good, I think it's a good chance to keep things rolling. But I guess if you know within like a week and you're like, oh no, (laughs) then maybe it is not meant to be. (laughs) All right. There you go. Well, Delaney, this has just been an absolute pleasure. I mean, I knew it would be based on who the two people that recommended you and just how phenomenal they are and just the high praises they had for you. But it's just, it really has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing with me and with our audience. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us in this episode of the Millennial Rockstars podcast. Be sure and check out the next episodes coming live to you and we will see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the Millennial Rockstar podcast. If you are looking for even more information on millennials and some free resources, visit my website at amandahammett.com. The link is below. It's amandahammett.com. There you can download a free millennial employee engagement guide that will give you all kinds of tips and tricks on how to keep those millennials engaged on a day-to-day basis. Because we all know that millennials who are happy at work are more productive at work.